And what I want to talk in the following is how to encode hard string problems with answer set programming. This is not the usual talks I give about algorithms and data structures, but how to use a tool which is more subtle in the setting of artificial intelligence to solve hard problems. So why do I consider that? That's because only a tiny fraction of problems can be solved efficiently. It's actually much more problems that are NP-hard. You can even see that there are infinitely many because if you take um, NP-hard instance A and B and you want to find instance that both attains the properties of A and B, then it's still NP-hard. So this NP-hard property is closed under union intersection and concatenation. But sometimes you are in the situation where you want to solve a problem for which no efficient solution exists. So what can you do? You can use heuristics like approximation algorithms, probabilistic tree search or evolutionary algorithms. But maybe they don't work for you as you want to have exact solution. So about what are I, talk I are talking, so um, to give you an idea, we just focus on a very popular problem uh, people work in when working with strings, which is MP-hard, and that is closest strings. So the closest string problem is defined as follows, where I have a set of M input strings, S1 to Sm, on an alphabet sigma of size small sigma and we say that to make it a little bit easier that each string has the same length n and what you want to do is you want to construct a target string t such that it has the same length and you want to have one that has the fewest number of errors in that you compare each um, input string with this target string t and you compute the hemming distance and you take the maximum of all the computed hemming distances and you want to minimize this maximum. So this is uh, here written out more um, mathematically spoken and the problem is, yeah, that it's MP hard because we know it from literature that whenever you're, the number of characters that appear in the strings is at least two, so even binary, then then it's MP hard in N and M, so the number of strings and the string lengths. Fortunately, there are efficient solutions for this problem, like integer linear programming, programming solvers, etc. So. To give you more intuition, let's look at an example. So here are five input strings. And what you want to construct is a target string t, such that if you do a comparison with the hemming distances, that for each hemming distance you take the maximum and you want to minimize that maximum. And if you look closely to that example, maybe you need more time, but just here I give you the solution, which is sleep less less. This is basically the condition I am for creating you this talk. You can see that sleeplessness is a solution where for each input string, you have three errors. So whatever you look at here, you have three errors. You have up there three errors because here is n and here is l, l and s, s and e. So you have for each of the input strings three errors. So the maximum over all these um, hemming distances is three. And if you do an exhaustive search, you can be sure that there is no better string, which means you don't get some other string with even fewer errors. So why is this problem interesting? First, there are more than two dozen of papers in either conferences or journals. And it's a string problem and I love strings. The problem is 
Yeah, if I want to solve that problem in practice, then I have to look out for a solution first. But, well, if you look for solutions, you look at the papers and, for instance, this one here, it's very interestingly written in that for the experiments, they tried to compare with another algorithm, but because its code is not available, they couldn't do it. Unfortunately, even the, paper, uh, the authors of this paper didn't publish their code, so you're basically left without code after reading this paper. The next thing you could do is you reach out for code repositories in the web, like for this one here, where it just says, uh, well, um, the details are explained on the homepage, which is just a dummy homepage, so you don't get any details about that. And this is just on GitHub. But there, is, there are other projects on GitHub, like um, this one, which wants to create a challenge about the most efficient closest string programs. But, um, well, it was kind of an initial advancement, but you don't see much progress there. Also from this one, which is based on Swarm Intelligence, and uh, this list is not complete, there are a bunch of more, but whenever you look at one of these codes, you get the feeling that it looks like an unfinished student project, so you wonder whether the code will run, so maybe, and you're lucky, but who can guarantee you that the results are correct, so you don't know, and up so far I've looked at the code, there are no tests, so you're kind of left alone. So, what are our aims here? The, the our aims are like, you could solve this problem either if you program it by yourself with brute force or exhaustive search, which you can maybe for a closest string do easily, but because of the combinational, uh, combinatorial explosion, it prevents you for, to get that code even to run on small instances. If you use these more sophisticated solutions, like uh, there are solutions for integer linear programming or for MaxSet, then it's a burden on the implementation side. So it's a burden on your time spending in front of the computer hacking the code. And this is also not nice because you are already sleepless. So you want to have a solution that's kind of in the middle way. And that's what I want to show you. There exists a solution. And that we have for rapid prototyping. So it's an easy implementation. It's easy implementable in this language ASP get decent speeds, so even for not so small instances you get results. So the, our goals are that we aim for fast problem solving and we want to have kind of an early stage solution, like in the case that it's still not satisfactory, what you get, you can work on that and that you provide in the next step an even better solution, maybe on a ILP or MaxSet, but you can use that solution already for testing whether the results you produced are correct. And that's what I present you, it's uh, uh, NCZ programming, which is a kind of a prologue-like declarative language where you can express uh, common problems like traveling salesman problem in even just a few lines of code and it's still performant of somewhat small instances. This um, ASP is uh, standardized and there is current reference implementation available called Klingo, which is under active development. And the nice thing is if you have a standard uh, Linux distribution like Ubuntu or Debian, uh, you can just use the package manager to install you the software. And then you have it and you can run Klingo. So how does this 
ASP look like if you want to use it for solving closest string? I can show you the code because it's just seven lines. And in the following, I just walk through each of these lines to get you to understand how this works. So, what you want to do in the first place, and this is the first line, you want to read the input. So, the first question is, how does the input look like? And this is easy because, for instance, in our example where we have these five strings, S1 to S5, what we want to do is we express each character by this three tuple where the first dimension is uh, where it came from, which string. The next one is which character. So for instance, here in the first string and the first character, and it has the ASCII value of 108, which is this L here. And you do that and write down this uh, list, and this is your input, which gives you this small s. And what we do in the first line here in the code is we create a helper variable called mat, which is uh, short for matrix, which just stores information whether there is a character for the x string, for sx at position i. I just use that for an abbreviation. Okay, so we have modeled the input. The next question is, how do you model the target value? So the target string and how should it look like? The thing is that you could choose any characters, but it's wise to use specific ones. And for that we use the following lemma, which is a very easy observation in that for choosing the ice character of your output, it just needs to be one of the ice characters of the input strings, which is uh, written here. And that's because if you don't do that, then you pay for each input string a mismatch. But if you do, then at least for some of them you don't. So this is kind of a win-win chance, so you should take that because it makes your life easier and that you can define uh, effective other bet for the ice position or for the ice column you want to compute because I want to represent T again as a matrix. So the matrix is based on the columns, which is the text position, and then for the vertical axis, the character you want to choose. So it gets a, a matrix T, I, C, which is set if the ice character of t is equal to c. And um, the number of um, variables you can, the number of possible options you can choose at the i's position, it depends on the sigma i. So this is what I write at the clause, and that you can only choose at the i's position one character. And to give that expression uh, complexity, I've written down there uh, complexity expression in that you need n times that kind of clause because you have n positions and for each clause you have to choose one of these characters and there can be at most minimum of m and sigma many which gives you this number of variables. And this is what we do in line 2 where we choose t. Okay, then because now we have chosen t, we want to now argue how good is t. So we want to define some costs, we want to model costs. And for that, we look at the next line where we define the cost c just as a single mismatch, which is defined by if um, we have the situation that we looked at uh, TIC where we have set it, but SX does not match at the ice position with C, so then we have to pay the cost CIX. Uh, this is also uh, written up there and expressed in the ASP language uh, with this condition where C doesn't equal A and A is in the character in SX at position I. 
Then what we want next to do is we want to compute the hemming distance. So we want to sum up these costs while fixing x but summing up uh, over all elements in one row. And we do that by using the helper variable cost and using this ASP directive to sum up all these costs C. And finally, we want to take the maximum. There is also another directive called max, and it stores in M cost, which is basically a binary vector with just one entry marked as with one, which is this large M. And this gives us where the maximal cost is. So the maximal cost is large M. And we want to minimize this maximal cost, which we do in line six. This is also expressed here in um, mathematical terms, where we here could compress five and six together, because we take here in the Hamming distance and take here the max. So this gives us one expression for the minimization, and we can see that we have m n variables in this expression. Okay, and the next thing is, yeah, or the final thing is that we want to output something, and we output t, our target string, um, the maximum cost and the costs. So in the end, what we get as the complexities are and sigma selectable variables for the um, target strings because you have for each uh, text position uh, sigma many different choices. This gives you this matrix. You have a matrix for the costs, which is n times m. And if you can uh, look at if you look at the line three, you can see that you have three different um, variables that play together, which is the number of strings m, the lengths n, and sigma for these clauses. So the number of clauses in, in line 3 that got generated are these many. So having that set up, you can actually run the code. For instance, if you run that code on our example, it gives us the following output. You can see in the output that the maximum cost is 3, so it gives you actually the, the same solution as in uh, the example I showed you before, sleeplessness, where you can also see that for sleeplessness you had costs, individual costs, so the naming distances between um, each of the input strings is always 3, and you get, uh, if you write t, so you concatenate, concatenate um, t0, t1, and so on. And during, during the concatenation, you write back from the S key the actual characters, you get back the sleeplessness example string. Nice thing is, it works in practice. So there is code available. Just look at this homepage and download the code and run it. Uh, the nice thing is, uh, we have Python wrapper around the ASP and Klingo calls. So you just have to treat basic um, input with plain strings and you get plain strings back. It's also kind of to think about that as a framework where you can easily write code for other problems or improve our ASP solutions like one of the CPM reviews already did. You can also run the code and use it for benchmarks, like you have written your own brute force approach, like you test for every possible value for this target string, and you want to see how good the ASP solution or your um, brute force algorithm works. Like here, uh, I did that experiment with some randomly generated small texts or datasets, where one of these cryptic strings denotes what kind of type this dataset is, where s marks uh, sigma. So we have sigma equals 5, so the alphabet size is 5. We have m equals 7, so 7 input strings. And each string has length 9, and it's the zeroth iteration. So I did multiple iterations with the same pattern. In the columns, you see here is the x, which is the maximum cost. So this is 
the solution, um, the maximum Hamming distance you can get, like here it's six or seven. Then you have here this S, which means the number of seconds you need for the computation. And you can see that ASP is much, much faster than the brute force approach. And that's because it has just a few numbers of choices to consider, while the brute force approach has to consider much more. So does it look like it's kind of nice to use ASP, but wait, there are already solutions like using integer linear programming for solving closest string. So why buzzer? Well, maybe you don't have the exact problem, like you work on a different problem, like something which is related, close a substring, for example. Then there are fewer references and much fewer implementations. So if you look at ILP code or code for Maxit, then you can see that it's hard to adapt for your problem, maybe, or probably, but it's very easy if you have ASP code. So for instance, look at uh, my uh, code repository and look at uh, the code for closest substring, which is very similar to closest string. In the end, I also have to tell you about some weaknesses about ASP, and uh, that's mainly that it's much slower than good max set implementations. Like for instance, we tested for string attractors, where we had um, we have a shown implementation in max set last year, but it took 566 lines of code when working in Python with the Python library, and it was kind of uh, too technical in that for the presentation itself we had to hide what's actually going on there. On the other hand, uh, you can just write five lines of code for solving string attractors with ASP. But it's not as efficient as in the MaxSet solution written in Python. And that's all. Thank you for listening. So what we have seen here is some nice solution, hopefully nice, for solving um, the uh, closest string problem with ASP. So I introduced you to the ASP for solving string problems. We've seen that it's yeah, remarkably fast to write the code because the number of lines are quite few in numbers. The actual code I've written for few other string problems is available for comparison, for benchmarks and so on. It, it's an easy uh, framework in that you can write your own code there or you can improve uh, the ASP implementations. You can just do whatever you want with the code. Um, the drawback is that it's small, it's, it's slower than sophisticated solutions, so if you have a very well done solution, it will probably beat the ASP solution. But on the other hand, um, I think the ASP can be faster than some naive solutions. So the code is available at this site and I can just say happy coding. And uh, yeah, again, thanks for listening.